Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. Hello everybody, this is Chris, KY4CKP. I just want to uh, do a quick introduction here uh, for part two of the DX Commander all band vertical antenna. I'm uh, going to be showing some of the assembly processes for this. Uh, and keep in mind, you can order this antenna from Callum McCormick in the UK with most of these assembly procedures already done, if you would prefer, and then it's a, a pretty simple assembly. But doing some of these, if you'd like to be a little bit hands-on, just a little bit of soldering and crimping and things is not too bad. So we're going to be going over some of these procedures coming up uh, and showing some of the activities here. And then uh, also towards the end showing some of the capabilities that I've uh, been able to experience so far with this antenna. So let's go ahead and get right into some of the assembly processes. All right, in this uh, setup right here, folks, I'm going through some of the cutting and assembly process for the ground radio system that I'm going to deploy with this antenna. And again, Callum has some really good videos online, and he talks about radio systems for antennas, especially vertical antennas, and some of the research he's done and testing he's done. And uh, so I'm following some of his advice. You can look at his videos. I may link that below. But when you do this, uh, it largely comes down to having enough square footage of wire on the ground as opposed to raw length of wire on the ground. So I'm putting together several assemblies here, which is how he's designed the antenna. Uh, I purchased some additional wire to do this, that yellow wire. Uh, it comes with uh, DX or D10 is the original wires type. It's a very uh, decent wire. And I wanted to save that, the, the black wire for the uh, elements. Uh, I knew I was gonna be putting up uh, 80 meter uh, inverted L, uh, doing everything pretty much at quarter waves. I do have a, a full length uh, six meter though. And um, so I wanted to save that wire. So I bought this, uh, this thin inexpensive yellow wire. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's technically for uh, invisible fences for dog, electronic dog collars and things, something like that. Uh, it's cheap, it, it's easy to work with. So I uh, set it up, did the crimping and uh, did the soldering. Again, simple work. Uh, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I don't have all the right tools for some of this stuff, but you can make it happen and uh, and just take your time and, and have some fun with it, hopefully, if you like to be a little bit hands-on, which I typically do. I don't mind doing some of these things. So just showing some of the assembly and crimping process. Uh, I did several of these, so I'm just showing kind of one of them. Just measure, cut to length, uh, strip it, put on the ends, some simple soldering. And so far, again, it's working out great. Haven't had any problems with these radial systems. Seems to be having a good enough effect. Uh, not usually that much uh, noise uh, through the antenna. Uh, you know, that kind of thing varies by day, as we, uh, we all know. But it's been working out really well for me. And, and again, we'll see some of the results here at the end of the video. So again, as you can see, pretty simple stuff. Some simple assemblies going on here. Some simple soldering. And uh, not, not a real high skill level. So if you have a little bit of equipment or uh, buy something inexpensive, that's an inexpensive uh, soldering iron from, uh, from, e or from Amazon. Uh, it's, it's a pretty decent one, though. It actually gets nice and hot and uh, melts the solder well. I have a couple of others that uh, really aren't, they just don't seem as good. They don't get hot enough, I think, is part of the issue. So there's plenty of choices for those kinds of things, uh, depending on how much soldering you may actually do. So, again, easy to do. You can use the wire that Callum provides. Uh, again, I chose to, uh, to buy some cheap wire to do this, just to make sure I would have plenty of extra wire for elements. I'm using five elements currently, and I still have room for a six element, so I may decide to put something else on. But I do have plenty of that uh, D10 wire left to go. The D10 is, uh, as we'll see with the elements a little bit later, it's copper and steel, so it's a decent wire. All right, in this section, I'm just showing a finished uh, section of the, uh, the radials that I put together there. I did several of those bundles. I'm showing the uh, tubing that Callum supplies with the kit. Uh, it's just uh, uh, the uh, fish tank tubing, but you can cut that off. You've got the stainless steel uh, hose clamps and slip it on, as you can see here, and it gives a lot of good friction to hold the pole sections together for those longer-term deployments, but also helps protect the pole uh, from the sharp edges of the hose clamps. So, again, you cut those to length. There's plenty of that hose tubing in there to work with. Again, one of the uh, element radial sets. You can see a couple more in the background there. So, again, just some of the simple little assembly steps, putting on the uh, ground plate and radiating plate, a few screws and nuts. There, there's nothing very complicated with this uh, kit, folks. Again, if you want Callum to do a lot of those steps for you, you can pay for that, a little extra money, but you can do a lot of it yourself. 
Okay, here we're just showing a close-up of one of the hose clamps as we're uh, putting it onto the uh, antenna mast, showing it underneath one of the uh, the nylon plates there, the high-density uh, plates, just to kind of show you what that, that looks like. You can put one at each section uh, junction of the uh, the element uh, or the, uh, the mast and for each of the plates that are on there. So you, it comes with all those uh, stainless steel clamps that you need in different graduated sizes, and then you can put on that, uh, that tubing, again, to help give it a good amount of friction and keep it up especially if it's going to be a windy environment uh, Callum lives in England and goes to the coast on vacation a lot and uh, so he'll set these up uh, in various arrays and things and do testing and uh, can get up quite a bit of wind there on the coast I've had mine up now already for uh, gosh I don't know a good month or two and uh, through a few storms and things and it's been ending standing up great uh, you, uh, you'll see here in a little bit that I've got uh, show some of the pictures of how I've got it, the guy line set up uh, and I use some bright orange uh, line for that to uh, help keep it from being a trip hazard and that kind of thing. Uh, it's been doing great, handing up to the weather, the wind, and everything. And yet it's still pretty easy for one person to put up or take down if you want to, or especially in the early phase when you're doing adjustments to the element links and everything. Uh, one person can take it up and put it down. You have a screwdriver, and you loosen a few of those uh, hose clamps, and you can take it up and down very quickly and very easily. None of it's very heavy. And again, it's really meant to be transportable, and I'm just using it in a more semi-permanent installation, which a few folks do uh, use the antenna for. Here we can see I'm working on one of the elements. Uh, it's, it may be a little tough to see, but I'm working with some of the black wire. Now we can, uh, you know, you'll see that the black uh, D10 wire. Again, it's a combination of several strands of copper and a couple of strands of steel in the uh, in the PVC coating. So it's uh, it's really quite strong and and uh, and flexible. Uh, so it stands up well and works well to uh, even even high wattage. I think uh, Callum's tested that all the way up to 1,500 watts or so. So it's uh, it's a great wire. I believe it's, it has some military ratings to it, at least for, uh, for the UK uh, system over there. But it works well for that stuff, and uh, I've got quite a bit left over I may find some uses for. Uh, again, putting on, uh, tending the leads and putting on some, uh, some of the blade connectors and things. A little bit of soldering and, and that kind of stuff. It, it's not a lot. It's not very difficult. It doesn't take all that long. You know, what are you going to have? Six of these, you know, at most probably. So if you if you don't mind being a little bit of hands-on, it's not too bad. And then also showing putting a loop on the end of the elements so that you can connect them uh, at your different points along the mast. And uh, he includes some shock cord, some stretch cord, so that you can put that on there. Uh, whenever you're putting up things, it's really not a good idea to put them up under uh, a lot of static tension. So he includes some of that shock cord so that you can have some of that flexibility in there, especially with wind loading and things like that. So not too hard. You'll figure out your links, add a few centimeters on there for the loop. And he includes the uh, shrink tubing, which is glue line shrink tubing. Uh, you can kind of find that sometimes as referred to as marine grade maybe. Usually has the glue line and uh, makes a nice secure connection uh, when you make the loops and tie everything off. So again, with this section here, folks, what I did is I just used some of the uh, bright orange. Uh, this is 550 paracord. There's all kinds of cord that you could use for this. He includes those little snap clips uh, that you can put on the end of each one of those. Created the three guy lines, staked it out, got the tension decent, and that's all it really takes uh, to, to stake it down. Uh, it's a fairly low point, and it holds the antenna very well. Again, several storms, no problems at all. All right, folks, it's pretty much that time. We've assembled the antenna at this point. We've done all the major components. We've shown you pretty much all the steps, cutting and creating those ground radial uh, bundles, creating the uh, vertical elements. It's simple skill sets, folks. Don't be intimidated by this. If you're a little bit hands-on, if you want to take a look at this, and you can get a lot of help from Callum himself. There, he's got assembly videos online to help you out. There's plenty of folks that have these that would be willing to help you out. Uh, certainly, you can contact us here at Alcara. Uh, we've got the assembled antenna. Again, it's a lot of fun project to build, I think. Give yourself a half a day. Uh, don't rush anything. Measure twice, cut once. Uh, but a lot of the components are easily replaceable as well. So if something happens, you don't have to go all the way back to England to get a part. Now, if uh, the worst happens and you need a new uh, mast, you can get a new mast from Callum as well um, at, a, at a good price. But all the other hardware is relatively see, simple to get a hold of. So it's a fun project. Take a look at this one. Uh, again, you can uh, you can pay him to do a lot of those sub-assemblies, but uh, consider doing it yourself. The, the skill sets are not extreme, and I think you could have a lot of fun with this antenna, and it's a great performer. 
Okay, here in the final section, folks, just wanted to show kind of the completed uh, antenna setup. I've got the uh, LMR400 uh, cable, uh, marine grade cable that I ran around to the front of the house where my shack is. And um, also wanted to show a couple of simple maps that I've been putting together. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to do that, places you've traveled and things. And I know for ham radio folks, we like to do that kind of stuff. So we can keep track of the, the places we've contacted. So I've just started uh, some simple maps that I use as my wallpapers on my laptop. Uh, and uh, have it rotate between them and I'm just simply putting on uh, simple pen markers on there a US map and a world map to uh, to keep track it's, it's kind of a, a lot of fun to have that kind of stuff visually uh, and you can see here that uh, even though the bands are terrible the bands are dead right now right everybody keeps saying it uh, I've been making plenty of contacts around the United States and continue to do so making plenty of contacts around the world uh, again I'm, I'm my proudest achievement so far has been uh, the contact in Russia at about 5,500 miles uh, but you know Brazil and many other interesting places so far Cur Curacao and a few others uh, Northern Ireland uh, that was a lot of fun so there's plenty of, of capability in this antenna. It's a great receiver. It's a great transmitter, and it's a great price point. Uh, it, it's not an expensive antenna, and that's one of the things I liked about it the most. I didn't mind having a little bit of a hands-on aspect, and it's a great price point. Uh, and it's easy to put up and take down, and uh, if you want to have it be portable, transportable. So take a look at the DX Commander from Callum McCormick uh, in the UK. M0MCX is his call sign. Uh, M0MCX.co.uk is his website. And uh, he's got a lot of good, good things going on and plenty of, of videos himself, and including some assembly videos for the, uh, for the antenna. So again, have a good time with your hobby. Get out and, and, and be as hands-on as you want to be. You know, that's one of the things that uh, Brian... Uh, KY4, BDP, and I uh, are kind of stressing. You can be as hands-on and as uh, maker as you want to be with this stuff. And uh, you can buy pre-assembled stuff or you can build things yourself. Um, so have some fun. There's plenty of gear out there. We're trying to review some of these options for you. And we will uh, see you folks in the next video. So 73s. All right, well, I fooled you folks. You thought we were done, but I, uh, I decided to slip one more little component in here to the video. I've recently uh, got... SDR, the SDR Play uh, One Alpha set up on my system with SDR Uno software, and I just wanted to slip in a quick screenshot right here. I've got that working. I've got it uh, able to control my rig, and again, working with this antenna, being able to share the uh, DX Commander antenna between my FT891 radio from Yesu and the uh, the uh, SDR, and uh, it's really a lot of fun. You know, I've got uh, I teach computer classes, and so I've got 27-inch uh, monitors. And uh, being able to dedicate a 27-inch monitor to a, uh, a pan adapter, basically, and having the, the giant waterfalls and stuff is a lot of fun, I can tell you that much. And uh, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, Brian's got one of these as well, and I know another Elkara Club member uh, has one as well. So we're going to be talking about those, those electronic devices as well and, and doing some comparisons uh, of the antennas and things. So I just wanted to slip that in here right at the end as a little bit of a bonus for the, uh, for the video. So once again, we'll catch you folks in the next video. Have a good one. Get out there. Enjoy the hobby, even if you travel. And once again, 73s.